how to think outside the box to supersize and grow your business. Sharon Harnell's from here with a box on my head. Sometimes an improvement, to, according to many people. But today our idiom, our expression is think outside the box. How can we use that thought, that feeling, that idiom to grow and build our business? Well, think outside the box. This one's been around since about the 1970s and 80s. So it's a relatively new idiom and expression. Although it's traced to many uh, management consultants and um, gurus asking their clients to solve the nine dot puzzle. And I wish I would have made a drawing of the nine dot puzzle, but chances are if you've been around for any amount of time, you've seen it in some way, shape or form. It's just a series of nine dots and you're asked to draw four lines that continuously, that that uh, without breaking and picking up your pencil in order to connect all nine dots. Well, in order to solve that puzzle, which actually came from Sam Lloyd's Encyclopedia of Puzzles in 1914, even though a man named John, I want to say Adair, in 1969 claimed that he created this puzzle. Now, maybe he was the first one to apply it to management consulting or um, to, to try to sell it to big businesses, but it's traced all the way back to the early 1900s. So it's unlikely that he made up this gamer puzzle. Maybe he learned it from someone in his family, but I don't think that he probably made it up. And actually J.P. Gulford, <laughs> excuse me, um, wrote an article in Psychology Today, Thinking Outside the Box, A Misguided Idea. And he was one of the first people to study creativity, one of the first psychologists to actually study and do scientific studies of creativity and try to figure out how that aided or just was a disadvantage with respect to problem solving, running businesses, and being involved in the business and the professional world. All it means is to explore ideas that are creative, that are outside the normal constraints or rules or ways of thinking. I think a brainstorming is one of the most fun ways to think outside the box. Or thought showers as we learned a few days ago. So how do you do it? What are some ways that you can actually think more creatively, look for, for solutions that aren't the, the thing that everybody else is doing or the norm for your industry? Well, there's a lot of different ways. I found 10 different ways on a site online, of course, and doesn't mean it's the, the be all and end all. And, and some of these you might've already used. I use several of them. Some of them I probably never use and a couple of them like flexing my brain. I've flexed my brain, but I've never um, taken words and alphabetized them or put the words in alphabetical order. So for example, if you were doing calm, calm would become A-C-L-M, right? And I don't know what that does. I guess it just gets our brain looking at things and thinking of things in a different way. So that's one of the 10 ways. What, is, what are the other 10 ways? How to think outside the box. Number one, and this is actually one of my current favorites, ask a child what they would do. I ask my granddaughter all the time what she would do. I've been hanging out with her most of her little life. She just turned six. And it's always amazing the different fresh perspective that a child will bring to a situation and allows us to think and see things differently than we normally would on our own. Number two, simplify what you're doing. Simplify it. Simplify anything. We as human beings have this incredible ability to overcomplicate everything. Anybody guilty of that besides me? Oh yeah. So simplify the thing that you're doing. Think more simply. K-I-S-S. -S, keep it simple. Someone. Because we tend to overcomplicate things and usually the simplest solution is the best solution. Number three, ask what I would do differently if I were starting from scratch. What would I do differently to solve this problem or to deal with this situation if I was starting from the very beginning? Number four, ask the question why. Why is an extremely powerful question. Why have we always done it this way? Have you ever worked with a company or organization that says or joined a new company and realized that they had a very old uh, paradigm and way of doing things and they didn't like change at all? Been there, done that. Not exactly fun, but it's kind of a fun challenge to get the gears and the wheels of those organizations changing. So ask the question why? Well, why do you do it this way? Why have you always done it that way? Have you ever thought of doing it a different way? What if we were to look at this situation differently? What if we were to look at this situation as if a child were solving the problem? Number five, flex your brain muscles. This is one I was referring to in the beginning. Alphabetize, and they gave a couple examples of how you could do that. Number one, alphabetize words. So if you're looking at different words of a problem or something, 
put the words in alphabetical order. I don't know, I guess like it's just your brain thinking and seeing things from a different perspective. The other one was um, try to speak without using any words that contain the letter E. Now, I've never tried this one, but it sounds hard to me because E is actually the most common vowel in the English language. So if you're trying to take out all the words with the letter E, I think that would be really a challenge. It might be a fun game to play. It'd probably be a fun party game to play, right? So if everybody's having a few cocktails, try to play that one without using any words that have the letter E in them. I don't even know if I could do that. I'd have to, I'd have to almost write them out to know if they have E in them or not. Uh, and then another one was just practice adding a series of single digit numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, six, eight, four, three, two, one, nine. Just a random order, add them up in your head. It's a way to flex your brain muscles and get your brain muscles thinking and working more efficiently and more properly. Um, number six, take a class, learn something new. It's easier than ever to take a class or learn something new these days. I'm in a reading challenge right now. Thank you, Avil. And I'm reading a really incredible book called Average Sucks, which is, is something I've felt and believed for a long time. But it's really fun to read a book that someone actually wrote on the topic. And it actually talks about how we live our lives in a box with four sides. And I won't, I won't spill the beans and tell you what the four sides he he discusses are but really a different way a different a, a different perspective that I have not even thought about before I thought about a couple of the things that he brings up but a couple of them were brand new or he's taken material that I've heard before and learned before and he's presenting it in a different way which makes it really powerful because it gets my brain and my gears going and thinking about well never really thought of it that way how do I fit into this framework and how do I change the box that I am currently living in. Number, so take a class, take a course, learn something, listen to a master class, easier than ever with the internet these days. On number seven, free write, just start writing. Number eight, draw a picture, just start sketching and doodling and drawing. Our brain, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> processes words and pictures differently. So using two different formats, two different modalities, helps to stimulate our thinking and our ability to solve problems and come up with creative solutions that are outside the norm, outside the box. Number nine, create a mind map. Mind maps are one of my craziest, most fun tools and activities. Maybe because a lot of the time my brain's all over the place and sometimes I just need to capture all of the ideas and get them down in one place and a mind map if you've never done one just google it it's a terrific way to do that and finally also one of my very favorite things probably my ultimate number one favorite thing to do when i need to think about something when i need to think outside the box when i need to find a solution to a problem maybe one that's been perplexing me for a while i love to just take a walk get out get of my normal working spot get out in nature Breathe the fresh air, even if it's raining and pouring, I can go for a walk in my raincoat or umbrella, but taking a walk, changing my scenery, changing my environment is an incredibly powerful way to think outside the box and find a solution to a problem that I need a solution for. It's all about thinking differently. It's all about looking for alternative solutions. It's all about opening yourself up to and just being willing to even consider other possibilities. So I would love to know, how do you think outside the box to grow and build your business? What are some ways that you've thought outside the box in the past? And how has that benefited you and your organization? Share that in the comments below so we can all learn from you as well. That's it. That's our idiom for today. Think outside the box. I invite you to think outside the box today. If I can help you in any way, ask in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it in your business and your life right now? Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye.